So I'm going to date myself just a little bit. It's not too bad, but I did come across a term the other day and it took me a minute to try and figure out like, what is this? So you guys heard of FOMO, F-O-M-O, FOMO, F-O-M-O. That is fear of missing out. And once I finally Googled and figured out what it was, um, I started doing a little research and I started thinking about it and how uh, prominent that thought and that ideology is these days because we have so much going on in our society. Yes, in particular, as it relates to social media and the prominence that FOMO actually has now on individuals. So it doesn't really matter uh, what you are comparing yourself or who you compare yourself to or what the comparison is. We tend to all feel like uh, we are not complete. We're not enough. And yes, we're missing out. One of the more prominent thoughts that I have is as it relates to travel. It's just so bananas. People been traveling for hundreds of years. And um, but no time in history has it been so prominent because uh, we share every single thing on social media. And those uh, folks who are not traveling as much, you feel like maybe something is going on in your life wrong, that you're not on an airplane every week and you're not in a new country and you're not living your best life. And it creates these silos within yourself. It creates this uh, idea of less confidence. It creates uh, this sentiment of less achievement. And so what we want to do is kind of bust through FOMO today. We want to create uh, an environment where you understand that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and you are exactly who you're supposed to be at this time. And we want to create uh, a, 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 a mentality, a strong mentality around uh, self-confidence and just understanding who we are uh, and not compare us to, to, to anyone or anything. Now, we live in the West and everything is a competition. How much money you have, you know, how much, you know, how big you are in terms of your weight, how small you are in terms of your weight, what your lips look like, what your butt looks like, how big your breasts are, how small your breasts are, what kind of car you drive. Everything is a competition if you let it. If you let it be, everything's a competition. Even your email signature, we write, you know, doctor such and such with this degree and that degree and this website and this LinkedIn. Everything can be a competition if you let it. The goal of today's show is to let's break through all of that. Let's find some relatability and comfortability within ourselves. Okay. So welcome in to Rethink. Uh, We are going to really dig into this today and give you some really practical daily steps to free your mind from FOMO, from this fear of missing out. So if you're new to Rethink, please go ahead and subscribe to us. Either It doesn't matter where you're listening to us. If you're on YouTube, subscribe there. If you're listening on the podcast side, if you're on Buzzsprout or Google or Apple or iHeartRadio, welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Please go ahead and subscribe uh, to uh, Rethink so you don't forget, you know, who we are and where we are and come back and check us out every week because we, you know, we post at least two or three times a week uh, content like this, innovative uh, discussions that are going to help you to rethink, you know, decisions that you've made in your life. What's the goal? The goal is to improve the quality of life that you have. If you're fine with where you are, then, hey, God bless. If not, I'm sure there are a lot of things that we talk about here on this channel that can help you to make better decisions and therefore increase the quality of life that you currently have. Okay, so FOMO, let's get a working definition. It's a modern term used to describe the anxiety, anxiety that people feel when they believe that others are experiencing more exciting or fulfilling events than they currently are. Travel, food, relationship, career, money, uh, advancement, car, you name it, it can all be a competition. This concept 
uh, FOMO is relatively new, but humans have always had this fear, had, have had this sort of ideology that someone, some group somewhere has or is doing more than what they have. So this FOMO has become particularly popular uh, here uh, in this particular time period and really a decade or two ago when social media really became more prominent, uh, when people became more aware of what others were doing, social media. So historically, the FOMO, FOMO has its roots in human psychology, of course, where the need to belong and to be part of a community is crucial for survival. However, with the constant connectivity of social media, people are bombarded with images and with stories of others' curated lives. So this FOMO has intensified. And so we're going to come back and talk about that. But it's a that's a that adjective you should you should hold on to to people's curated lives because you should know that nothing is always as it seems, in particular on on social media. So high performing individuals like yourselves are often driven by achievement and by comparison. So you may feel especially vulnerable to this type of anxiety. So fear of missing out. There's opportunities. There are different things that you feel like maybe I'm not as advanced. I'm not as smart. I'm not, you know, as uh, abundant as this other person. And it could cause you some personal trepidation on your life journey. So what are we doing and what are some solutions? Well, detaching number one from social media is a key part of the solution. When individuals take breaks or they limit their time online, they reduce the constant comparison. They see less imagery, they're bombarded less, and therefore the anxiety seems to sort of fade away. Not totally, but it's not as heightened as if you're on social media every day. So this allows you to focus more on your own achievements. When you're focusing less on others, you can focus more on your own achievements. What is that going to do? That's going to help you feel present in the present moment. It's going to feel, you know, it's going to build confidence within yourself. Um, rather than feeling the pressure of comparing yourself to someone else who's on a completely different life journey. So in going through the um, preparation for this particular podcast, there were a number of things that um, came up as relates to potential solutions, uh, some or, or most of which, you know, we've talked about on the on the channel before. Uh, things like gratitude and, of course, certain types of meditation can be very helpful when you are um, breaking away from social media. You know, daily uh, gratitude journaling, uh, presence meditation. Presence meditation is when you spend several minutes a, a day, basically mindfulness, and you're focusing on, you know, your breath and also the present moment. There's no comparison. There's no social media. There's no um, movement, you know, in terms of your mind. You're just present in that moment. But one of the things that I thought I would dig into that's going to help you the most is something that's called compare less, celebrate more. Compare less, celebrate more. So each time you catch yourself comparing, for example, yourself to someone else, turn it into an opportunity to celebrate yourself. Celebrate your achievements. Celebrate the things that um, make you proud and that give you confidence. So what does that look like? A daily practice uh, would be to begin to create a mindset around focusing on uh, less on what others have and are doing, but highlighting and celebrating your own unique journey and your own unique achievements. It can encourage you to turn moments of comparison into moments of opportunity for self-acknowledgement and also for gratitude, just to be thankful, you know, for these particular achievements. Here's the thing. The constant comparison is where the anxiety comes from. With the with the fear of missing out, uh, everybody is is connected. You know, the world is hyper connected through social media, and it's easy to fall into a habitual thought pattern of comparison and competition. So, um, 
in order to break away from that one that you must limit yourself in terms of the amount of time that you're spending on social media. Number two, create a list of achievements of your own. Create a list of achievements of your own. What we're going to do, we're going to celebrate your own achievements. Instead of dwelling on what others are doing, take a proactive approach. Each time you catch yourself comparing, pause, and consciously redirect your focus. Ask yourself, what have I accomplished? What steps am I taking toward my goals? Whether it's something big or small, a career milestone, a relationship milestone, a physical health milestone, or something small like finishing a task, something around the house, something to do with your entrepreneurship, something to do with your podcast, your video blog, your blog. Or are you maintaining a healthy habit? You know, at the beginning of the year, we all started off on these new workout regimens and we're already in October, the 10th month. Are you maintaining it? That is quite an achievement. How much weight have you lost? How good do you feel? We're going to acknowledge all of this as personal success. So here's the way it works. The practice helps to refrain or I'm sorry, retrain your brain to focus on gratitude and self-appreciation. Again, This type of practice can help to retrain your brain to focus on gratitude and self-appreciation rather than FOMO, which creates anxiety, which stems from lack and from comparison. So when you have fear of missing out and when you have anxiety around that particular thought, you know, pattern, it's usually involved with lack and comparison. You're comparing yourself to someone else. And if you have the anxiety or feel pressure about it, it's because you feel that that person is is either better than you, which means there's more than. And there's lack there. So celebrating the small wins, reinforce positive feelings about your progress and boost your confidence. That's what making that list of achievements is going to do for you. Studies have shown that gratitude improves our mental health. And it increases our motivation as well as creates a sense of contentment. Again, studies have shown that gratitude improves our mental health. It increases our uh, motivation and also creates a sense of contentment within ourselves. So we're going to replace the anxiety that's created, the anxiety and the pressure that's created by FOMO, and we're going to replace it with motivation, with uh, great mental health and a sense of contentment. All right, so let's talk about how do we do this every day. Number one, you're going to catch the comparison. Well, let's start off with the assumption. The assumption here is this can work if you limit or detach from social media, okay? If you're spending you know, a lot of time online, scrolling through different platforms, you have a higher uh, propensity to continue this type of thought pattern. So if you want to break away from it, the fear of missing out, you're going to have to break away from what's creating it to begin with, and that's social media. So I'm not telling you to go completely away from it, but let's say you cut it in half. Let's say instead of, you know, uh, every day, it's every other day. Or maybe you give yourself a certain amount of time each day or you give yourself a certain number of days each week to be on social media. You're an adult person. Figure out what works for you. Limit your time on social media because the steps I'm going to give you next are not really going to work if you're not going to limit the time that you're on social media. It's kind of like if you want to lose weight, but you also don't want to give up your diet, you know what you're currently eating. You know what I mean? So you're going to have to give uh, something up. So that's the assumption that we're going to cut back on social media. You determine how much more is better. First thing you're going to do uh, is catch the comparison. Okay, so it's just like our thoughts, you know, uh, negative thoughts. We talk about a lot here on the channel. When you see yourself or fear yourself going into negative self-talk, you are to catch the thought and you are to interrogate the thought. This is the way that you stop negative thought patterns or, or negative thinking. You must stop the first thought. If you allow the thoughts to continue to matriculate, there's going to be more of them and more of them and more of them. And after a while, you're going to be in this new state of being. It's going to be an anxious state and a state of comparison and a state of pressure. 
So catch the comparison. Be aware of who and what you're comparing yourself to. And then ask yourself, why do I feel pressure to compare myself to this person or to to this individual? So whether it's about success or appearance or lifestyle, the first thing to do is catch the comparison. The next thing is to pause and reflect. Pause and reflect. Take a deep breath. Ask yourself, is this comparison helpful or harmful? Is it helpful or harmful? How do you know? Well, how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel like you're less than because you can't take a trip every week? Like, you know, whoever this person is, you're following on social media. Do you feel like, you know, do you feel uh, worse about yourself because you don't have the same body image and the body shape as this person on social media? Do you feel less accomplished because, you know, your income or your car or your house is not the same as someone that you are uh, looking at on social media? So the question again is, is this comparison helpful or is it harmful? The next thing we're going to do is celebrate your wins. So immediately shift your focus to something that you've achieved recently. No matter how small, no matter how large, immediately begin to shift your thoughts to something that you have achieved recently. That's why we need the list. We need to make a list of our achievements so that we can have it close by, something that we won't struggle to get our hands on or struggle to come up with. We want to have that readily available so that when we do identify negative self-talk or a comparison in this case, that we have uh, an alternative thought to go to. So here's an example. Uh, I just finished my project today. Uh, It can be work related or it can be home. Let's say your your project was the basement and you finished it. Well, God bless, because basements are hard to to complete. Uh, It could be a project at work uh, or, hey, I just celebrated my 15 year, my 20 year, my 30 year wedding anniversary. That is quite the accomplishment. Or. Maybe you just uh, celebrated the graduation of your fourth kid from high school. And this is four kids that you've successfully matriculated through a school system. Quite the accomplishment. So you should pat yourself on the back for that. But you want to make sure you have a list of at least 10 to 15 accomplishments that you have uh, done recently that you can revert to. And then the last thing, and this is the most important thing, along with detaching from social media, And that is reframe the comparison, reframe the comparison. Instead of viewing other success as competition, turn it into inspiration. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Again, instead of viewing others uh, and their accomplishments as competition, turn it into inspiration, celebrate their achievements. Also remind yourself that you're on your own path and you're also making progress. So this is really the meat of what we're talking about today. I'm going to give you two different ways to do this because I think it's important that we um, that we do both, quite honestly. Number one, um, let's acknowledge that everything we see on social media is not, and I'm using air quotes for those who are not on YouTube, it's not real. Okay, it is just not real. There's a whole lot of people living social media lives that look grand that are just not true. Okay, but if you're going to delve into this world and you're going to take this stuff seriously, um, here's the deal. Number one, recognize that it's just not true. A lot of stuff is just not true. But number two, for the 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 ones that are true. Uh, celebrate along with the person. If you see someone on social media, you just got a new husband, new house, new wife, new baby, and all of that stuff you don't have, but you want, celebrate it with them. See it as inspiration. In other words, if they can achieve it, so can I. Use it as inspiration. And the last thing is to be able to uh, just break the comparison altogether. Because we live in the West, and we are indoctrinated with um, hard work and competition. And, you know, the longer you do this and the bigger the results you're going to get and work harder and all this other kind of stuff, you've got to break away from that uh, methodology. 
that promotes this fear of missing out. If you're not always in front of your computer, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. I was reading something the other day about YouTube and the difficulty that um, successful creators have in continually creating content. It is a real problem. It is a real problem. And that's why people get more extreme and more extreme in the things that they're recording because they're, they're having such a hard time. The creators, that is, content creators, and keeping up and just continuing this flow of content, continuing the flow of content. And so you feel like since this other creator is doing this, then maybe you have to do that. This creator has so many views. Now I've got to get those number of views. This creator has so many subscribers. Now I'm not successful unless I have those number of subscribers. So if you are a content creator like myself, then you know this is a very real uh, com a comparison or competition. And, you know, it depends on what your motive is as to how you take this. I know when we were um, recording mostly on podcasts and not video, there wasn't always the pressure of format. There wasn't always the pressure of uh, the type of content that I'm doing and how quick I can get in and out because of uh, video views. But there is now, or there was, which is part of the reason why I brought this up in the first place. Um, that's a very real thing. I started, you know, I, I've always looked at people on YouTube and I get inspiration uh, from uh, different folks. And I, for my own personal, you know, spiritual walk, I listened to several different creators on YouTube. And I started to kind of compare what I'm doing to what they're doing. And maybe I should make my videos longer, shorter, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, I just stopped comparing myself to other folks. I enjoy what other people do if they bring light in that way and I'm able to see it. And if their pointers point me in the right direction, then God bless. I just can be me. I can only do me. And so I took the pressure off of myself uh, from trying to, you know, be a certain way just because we're recording. We're on YouTube now. And I figure the, the folks who are going to follow and the folks who are going to enjoy this are going to be attracted just to me. And quite honestly, that's what happens in life. Uh, so there's no need to feel uh, like you're in a competition for husbands, for wives, uh, for career advancement. Because the people that get you are going to get you, irregardless. You don't have to adopt the life of other people in order to be happy. Because I got, I got news for you. You can adopt the life of someone else. You know, all this high travel and, and all this content creation and this one's husband and this one's wife and this size house and this type car. I guarantee you, um, you're not going to be satisfied. Why? Because it's not who you really are. And while we all think that money is going to solve every single problem, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Our model here at Rethink has always been a life of fulfillment. And what we mean is when our work meets our passion, we have the greatest opportunity to be fulfilled. We know that, you know, resources is part of that, but just resources alone is not going to guarantee you a life of fulfillment, a life of joy and happiness. So just keep that in mind when you are feeling like you're missing out on something. You're right where you need to be. You are exactly who you should be at this time. Universe is for you. The universe knows and sees and understands exactly what needs to take place. The only thing that we have to do is accept that. Accept it as truth and live in it. Appreciate what other people are able to bring to the table in terms of inspiration. Don't see it as a competition. Don't see it as a comparison. Certainly don't allow it to subtract from who you are. Okay. I hope this has helped. I hope this has helped a lot. Again, this is Fear of Missing Out. If you guys haven't um, done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and please continue to um, please continue to uh, share our content with your family members, your friends, loved ones, and associates. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time on Rethink.